the Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I want to guarantee you 98% of people are in, have interpreted this verse wrong. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. Interesting. 98% of people have interpreted this word wrong. Interesting. The tongue itself is not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying, is saying that life and death are in the power of the language. Mm. Oh. The word tongue in Hebrew there is actually Lashon, which means the language. It means life and death are in the power of language. Mm. Those who know it and use it, eat the fruit of it. Mm. Speaking positive does not produce power. No. Yeah. Amen. You can speak as positive as you want. Nothing will ever happen. Because there is a language that when you speak, you can either produce life or you can produce death. It is not talking about the organ. I don't know if somebody is listening to me. Amen. Should people speak positively? Absolutely. Because anything negative doesn't help anyway. Speaking positive, at least it nurtures your brain, it nurtures your soul to feel good. Like an example is, if I decide to whisper sweet nothings to, to, to you online right now and say, oh, shalabayaba, you're becoming a billionaire, even though God didn't say it, you will feel good about yourself. Right. It won't do anything negative. Yeah. I don't know if somebody's capturing me. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, God speaks, yet he doesn't have a tongue. A literal tongue. Mm. Wow. He is spirit. Because remember the, 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 the function of your tongue is literally number one to taste. Mm -hmm. And it helps you in swallowing, right? Mm -hmm. It is your vocal cords that makes the sound of how you're going to speak and talk. If your vocal cords are affected, your tongue is not really useful. Yeah. Right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if somebody is listening yes, to me. Sir. Yes, sir. So go to Genesis chapter 1. From verse 1? Yes. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Uh -huh. And the earth was without form and void. Uh -huh. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Uh -huh. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Uh -huh. And God said, uh -huh. Let there be light. Now let me ask you a question. What language was God speaking? Hmm. That is the language that produces life. You didn't catch it. Some people missed it. Some people missed it. What language was God speaking? What was God saying? How did he say it? That is where the life is. Because the language he used is what produced life. But the same God can also produce a language that produces death. You know the devil cannot kill. The Bible says the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But the devil, in essence, cannot kill. Mm. When he says the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy, it is simply speaking about the devil's strategy to steal from you. If he steals from you, you are vulnerable, you are going to die. Mm. And when you die, then he destroys you. Notice it's three versions of death. Ah. Stealing, killing, and destroying. If somebody is dead, how can you destroy them? It means it's not killing in the way you think. Right. Mm. I feel like I'm oh, talking to myself. Something came up on the, on the thing. Can we, can we take it out? Uh, a pop-up. Uh, is somebody catching what I'm saying? Yes. Catch. yes. How, many, how many Christian quotings, uh, uh, how many uh, scripture quoting Christians you know they don't produce any life? Yes. Yeah. Mm. How many scholars have held this Bible and never produced life? Mm. Come on. Mm. Okay, I think we are done. People don't want to share, so we'll go <laughs> offline. I, I think I'm ready to, to go offline. I want you to share this as many times as you can and watch how God is going to change your life. Amen. Amen. So when people say, ha, 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 just speak the word, right. speak the word, right. it is true. 
but why isn't life coming out? Hmm. That is why so many people have begun to believe that the Bible is false. Wow, hmm. wow, wow. wow. Hmm. Hmm. Go deeper, Pablo. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to us. Are you, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm trying to teach you something. Is this making sense so far? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. Complete sense. If we, were, if we were to make a survey right now, if we were to do a survey right now, and, uh, 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 and we ask, how many people declare the word and it works? Mm. Mm. Very few of you will have answers and results. Mm. And then I'll ask you another question. What was, who wrote Genesis? Moses. Moses, Moses right? The first five books of the Bible mm -hmm. are said to be written by Moses, right? Yes. yes. Who wrote uh, Corinthians? Paul. Paul. Ah, you people are answering like you're not sure. Who wrote Corinthians? Paul. Paul, Paul. 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 uh-huh. Uh, who wrote uh, 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 the book of Job? Job. But when you read it, why do you say it's the word of God if it's Job that wrote it? Mm. If it's Moses that wrote Genesis, why do you call it the word of God? Mm. Mm. If Corinthians was written by Paul, why do you acknowledge it as the word of God? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Please help us. Mm. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They tapped into a dimension that their words, you don't consider it to be their words anymore. You consider it the word of God. Right, mm -hmm. Because right, when right, they spoke, right, things right. happened. Right, right, yeah, right. I right, feel right, like I'm right, talking to right. myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know if somebody's yeah, getting sure. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Wow. Hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you read Matthew, it tells you what Matthew, uh, uh, the gospel according to John. Mm -hmm. But you take it, you say, this is the word of God. <laughs> the word of God says right. <laughs> that God, right. heaven and earth shall pass. Mm -hmm. But the word of God shall not pass. But you're reading the book of Matthew. Right. <laughs> Matthew was just like you. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Hmm. right. Luke deep. was just like you. Deep, yeah. deep. deep. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Peter was just like you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. You see, some, uh, uh, b b b my daughter mm. Kathleen said, God speaks through us. No, that's not the point. I'm telling you we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's go there. Okay, D.D. Moore says the Spirit uh, inspired them as they wrote the Word of God. But before they wrote it, they were acting it. Mm. To Amen. write it, to inspire to write it means that God made them write it down for our sake. Right. Amen. Right. They right. didn't write it down then spoke. No. They spoke and then it was recorded. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. Ah. Uh, mm. mm. <laughs> can I tell you something that will sound outrageous to you? Please. Go ahead. You know you can write the Bible today. Absolutely. Amen. You can sit down and write the things that God is doing for you hmm. and what God has done for you. If you're truly walking with God and you know that language and you can use it to preach in church. Ooh. What is the difference between what you would say God did for you right. and what Moses wrote? Exactly. Right, right, Amen. Right. Hmm. The one Moses and everybody else wrote is because they agreed, they came, the, the, the council of Nicaea came together, the church fathers came together and decided upon the letters that were authentic mm -hmm. and put it together so that we can have a reference. Remember, the Christian faith is not dependent on the scriptures. It's dependent on the doctrine of the church. Hmm. Mm. Wow. So even if we have missing pages of the Bible, it does not affect our faith because we have the doctrine of our faith. Yeah. Wow. The scriptures don't make the faith. The faith mm. comes before the scriptures. Mm. Mm. Amen. Wow. Say Amen. that again. Say that again. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Our faith came before the scriptures. Right. Our faith produced the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. other religions, like Muslims, if they, they, they believe in their scripture, they don't believe in their faith. If they believed in their faith, they would know that it's not real. Mm. Mm. Wow. wow. I don't know if somebody's listening to what I'm saying. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I think I'm going to go off now. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. I think I'm going to dangerous territory. It's too deep. Go, go, Keep go. Going. Why is it when I prophesy to you, it happens? Mm. Right. Mm. 
many men. I know something you don't. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Are you are you are you are you guys listening yes. to me? Yeah. Teach, We're teach, listening. teach. Are, are you guys listening to me? Yes, yeah. Papa. <laughs> ah, the, the heat is too much. Let me, <laughs> let me. I'm, I'm bat on my uh, mm. my jacket a please, little bit. Please do. I, I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. Yeah. You see, you, 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 you are, you are a spirit filled Christian, born from above. But you don't know the language of the spirit. Yeah. Mm. You see, the Bible goes as far as to say this. It says that even if I speak in the tongues of angels mm -hmm. and I don't have love in me, I am nothing. Mm. So there is a language of angels. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Amen. The problem is you think, you see, people confuse praying in tongues and praying in the spirit. Praying in tongues and praying in the spirit are two different things. Mm. Okay. Praying in tongues is a form of praying in the spirit, but there are many ways to pray in the spirit. Teach. Mm. Anyone who prays in faith is praying in the spirit. Right, Ooh. right, 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 okay. right. Even though they are speaking human words, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they are speaking mm -hmm. spiritual language that God responds to. Right. Remember, God doesn't respond to your words. He responds to the faith within your words. Mm -hmm. So God is listening for something else. Amen. Mm. Wow. Uh, uh, wow, that's good. Uh, uh, is somebody listening to me? Yes. Yeah. Look at this. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Elijah stands and he says, it shall not rain according to my words for three years. He rebuked rain. Rain did not, rain did not come. Are you listening to me? There was no rain. Right? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. But when he wanted rain to come, he went and prayed. But when he was praying, he was not really praying. Is you think he was praying, but he was not technically praying. He was doing something, and then he would ask his disciple, go and check if there is a cloud that is forming over the lake. Why was he telling his disciple to go and look somewhere if something is happening? There was something he was shifting in the spirit. Mm, that's good. Because how do you pray and you tell somebody, uh, 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 go in the kitchen and see if the water is already boiling. Go and check again. No, no, go and check again. It means I am not in essence asking God send rain. I, it's called working a miracle. Amen. He was working a miracle because if he has the authority to stop rain, he has the authority to unlock the heavens. So he's working it to unlock it. You see, when Jesus was asked by his mother, uh, there is no wine. What did he say? Woman, my time hasn't come. Then she went to the servant and says, whatever he tells you, do it. But notice the, the, the code here. Notice the code. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. She didn't ask them to understand it. She didn't ask them to reason with him. She just told them, whatever he tells you to do, do it. So what changed the water to wine? The words he was saying as they did it, the water changed. I don't know if you're understanding. It was not a matter of prayer. He was working something. He was speaking a language that was causing the water to change. Amen. Said, fill it in that one. They filled it. Fill it in that one. Now take it to the master to drink it. Okay. Ah, this wine is deep. The sweetest wine we have ever drunk. So the servants are confused. He just told us to put water in the, in the jars. But then they were hearing water. But Jesus was saying, put the wine in the thing, in the, in the jar. They put it in there. And then he said, okay, take the wine to the master of the ceremony. 
But when you read it, it looks like Jesus is saying, pour the water into the jar. No, Jesus was already calling the water something else. Mm. You're not listening Amen. to what I'm saying. Go deep, go deep. I don't know if you're catching what I'm saying. Catching. How did the water change? Teach us. Ah. Teach us, Papa. <laughs> when Moses prayed when he was before the Red Sea, God rebuked him. He said, Lord, what shall I do? God said, why are you praying? Stretch your, 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 your staff over the water. Mm. Tell the water to part and it will part. So there was an act that he had to do for the water to obey him. Notice the same Jesus. The same Jesus is telling the storm, shut up. The storm keeps quiet. He tells the sea, come down, it comes down. The disciples looked at each other. They said, wait, 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 wait. What kind of human being is this? <laughs> what manner of man is this? This is not normal. What is going on here? Unlocking the power in words. Let me ask you a question. I'm just going to give you a small tip of what, where we are going. I, I, I want you to pay attention. Are you paying attention? Amen. Let me ask you a question. Let's look at our world the way it is and be completely honest. Mm -hmm. And be completely honest. What seems to have more of an effect? Good words or evil words? Hmm. Evil. Evil words has more of an effect. Yeah. Do you realize even something that sounds good, if it's bad, it's still evil words? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you look at our world, right, the words that seem to have more effect, not necessarily in the sense of powerful, because light will always be more powerful than darkness. Or the book will be on Amazon, will be everywhere. You'll find it anywhere you want. Amen. Amen. But, but listen to me, listen to me clearly. What seems to have more effect in the world is actually negative words. Not that negative words are more powerful, because you see, one good act erases a bunch of darkness. Amen. Mm -hmm. But it seems like darkness is more in the world than the light. Yeah. yeah. If you walk down the street, you will notice more people speaking negative than positive. Yeah. True. Yeah. Positive thinking and positive speaking is actually less. Yeah. True. You just talk to your co-workers and see how many of them are actually speaking positive. It's true. Things that sound good are not necessarily positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I making sense? Total sense. Now, my question is this. My question is this. Why is it that they have more effect? Why, why is it that they are more powerful? I want to see if people are mathematicians here. You know, the Bible says, work out your own salvation. Why is it that negative words seem to have more of an effect in the world? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> are, are you catching me? Yeah. Can I give you a shout? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The conviction behind the words. 
Okay, conviction behind the word. Okay, there are people who are convicted with good words, but it doesn't have power. Mm, that's good. Conviction is not bad. Yes. Is it because the atmosphere of this world is already uh, very conducive to, to evil and that type of word? Sorry? The atmosphere of this world is already evil, so the words that are evil that are released have more power than ground? Not technically, because sin began in heaven. Hmm. That environment was very holy. <laughs> but the devil in heaven did something very bad and caused even a third of the angels to fall. How did he have such an impact? Help us, doctor. Let's see, let's see, let's see the people online. I don't know if you can hear me. Let's see, can you read me some answers online? Uh, you, some people on Trinieta on YouTube is saying the nature of the flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, Pa Kwesi is saying because of the prince of darkness that rules over this world. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Um, people believe in demons more than angels. Okay. Somebody is uh, ask, saying the intent of the words. Mm -hmm. Level of faith. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, um, people. somebody actually said, Princess Spielman said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay. Uh, negative words are more consistent. Okay. Um, the mentality of the recipient or the mentality of the person that's speaking. Um, feelings. <laughs> Somebody said people naturally act towards the negative. So in essence, we need you to help us. <laughs> Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Yes. I'm going to give you an answer in two seconds. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. You see, the issue is you have an idea of spirituality, but you don't know it. Because all your answers are, are, are an assumption. An assumption, but they are not definite. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask a question. My daughter Rose, uh, give Rose the microphone. Yes, this is a good one for her. <laughs> Auntie Roses, you gotta put the mic close now. Okay. We need to hear you. <laughs> Auntie Roses. Yes, Papa. What do you do? I'm a producer. What do producers do? manage media mm -hmm. and, uh, so what is the process of managing media try to summarize it the best way you can um, we pretty much we, we, we schedule all working parts that have to do with services mm -hmm. um, including scheduling and hiring and anything that has to be um, visual aids um, cameras mm -hmm. okay sound okay I'm going to ask you a, a question. It may be silly, but just, okay, just answer me. If somebody says they are a producer, right, mm -hmm. but all they do is play golf all day, are they a producer? No. Why aren't they a producer? Because they're not producing, or they're not doing what it, the job entails. Thank you. That is a brilliant answer. You want to speak the language of God, but you don't live the lifestyle of God. Ooh, okay. That's so good. Yeah. You see, the people of the world, negative things work easily wow. because they are connected to the life that they live. Wow, that makes sense. 
Is this making sense? Total sense. Somebody who steals, it is easy for them to speak about stealing. Somebody who murders, it is easy for them to talk about murder. Somebody who parties all day, will easy for them to talk about all they talk about. Man, you remember the party? Ooh, he was late, bro. You know, he was going down. You know, man, you know what I'm saying? It was, that's all they're going to talk about because that is their life. Your words are a product of not only what is going on with you, but it is a product of your life. That is why somebody cannot speak beyond their level of education. You can pretend to be intelligent, but when we start listening to your vocabulary, we start looking at your thinking patterns, we know whether you went to school or not. You may cheat on your exams. You may cheat on your certificates, whatever you present. But when we begin to analyze your thinking, your problem-solving skills and all this, we, we will come to the conclusion that you are fake. You never did any of those things you're saying. So how can you speak the spiritual language that begins with an act? Okay, let me give you an example. You see, I've been telling people for a while when we, we came into this building, when we bought this building. I've been telling people for some time that uh, I'm still doing like about 2%. I'm going to start increasing it just slowly. Amen. Step by step. There are things I still know that if I do, a lot of people will not believe that God sent me. Because it's things that they're not used to. Right. Same thing when Moses did some stuff, they demonized him. And then later they said he was a man of God. <laughs> but when Moses was with them, they fought with him every step. Mm. When Jeremiah was with them, they fought him every step. Elijah, they were afraid of him because he could burn them. <laughs> 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 you get what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> the Lord Jesus, they fought him all the step, or every way. So in essence, what am I saying to you? There is a certain life I live that causes my words to have an effect in the spirit. Amen. So when I am speaking, I know how to switch from speaking earthly language to spiritual language. Even though I am using the English language, I'm still speaking a spiritual language. Wow. Is this making sense? Yes. yes. Why is it that people say, in the name of Jesus, no demon comes out? Meow comes say, hey! Shh. All of them, they start shaking. Ah! <laughs> I don't know if this is making sense. This is making sense. <laughs> you, you know, there, there is something... Uh, uh, Prophet Obed asked me, and it was actually it was actually quite funny. Uh, the question was actually really good. He asked me a really good question. He said, uh, "Prophet, why is it that uh, <laughs> he, he says he said, Prophet, why is it that when you want to get the attention, you actually change your voice?" I said, "Because they know I'm serious. But for you, if I come and I just do, hey, you'll be like." <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you okay, Papa? <laughs> that would be Esther Rose's answer. Uh, Papa Lo, you want some water? Actually. <laughs> 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 Is this making sense or no? I, I, are you catching what I'm trying to say? It's, it's much deeper than what people actually assume it to be. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's much deeper than what it's supposed to, what, what you think. There are certain things that have to be done. There are certain things that have to be done. 
for things to produce what God wants them to produce. Glory be to God. Be to God. <coughs> hey, the water went the wrong direction. <laughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so are you catching what I'm saying? So there is a certain thing I know that forces, demonic forces, evil spirits to have no choice but to do what I'm saying. You've seen me in church, and, and I would do this to encourage your faith, to show you that we can completely control them. Amen. So one, two, three, stand up, march like a soldier. Bah, 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 bah. You know, I've, you've seen me do all that stuff. Amen. Hands up, on your knees, they will fall on their knees. Why? It's because we have total control. But if you try to do it, they will, son, they will do you like sons of Skiva. They will kill you. Why is it that when I speak, when we did the, the, uh, the pool of, uh, when we did our, our, our pool of Belteza in the church, that I told you Angel Raphael was in the room. You saw what happened in the room. Crazy mm. stuff happened in the room. Yeah. Yeah. The woman who had the broken wrist on, oh on Thursday gosh. night. Aileen's friend. <laughs> right in front of your eyes, you mm. saw a, an arm that was dislocated, looking funny. Within five minutes, mm -hmm. it was back in form. She could do this, she could do this, she could, she could do all this, you know, she maybe even do belly dancing, you know, they do this. <laughs> <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Why is it that elements are obeying some of us and some of us they can't? Because the language, have you ever heard of body language? Yes. If you've ever heard of body language, uh, just put your hand up, even if you're on, uh, on, online, just, just put, you know, just raise them hands up. If you've ever heard of body language. Amen. If, if you went to, to China today, uh, my son Emmanuel, are you gonna communicate with your body or only words, or words and body? You don't know Chinese? You don't know Mandarin? No, like if you have to talk to somebody, you have no phone, you're in, you're in the middle of, of Shanghai. Uh -huh. You have to communicate, mm -hmm. okay? You're supposed to go somewhere, you don't have a phone. Right. And, and all you hear is that, ni hao, ni hao, mm -hmm. ha. Right. How are you going to communicate? Hmm. Body language, I guess? Hand language, sign you, you, language? You use every language you can. You know that my words they will not understand, but my body language they will understand. Right. I'm going, I'm trying to go here. Right. Is it that way? I'm trying to find food. Food, right. you know right. food? <laughs> then they'll say, ah, <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, they'll point you to, to some sushi restaurant somewhere. Right. Are you getting yeah, what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Because there is a universal language that anybody that possesses a physical body mm -hmm. speaks. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so mm -hmm. good. That's mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So okay. anyone who doesn't pay attention to body language, if they go somewhere where their words cannot be understood, mm. they can speak with their body and they will be understood. So if they right. just go there and their hands are in the pocket like, uh, I'm trying to get food. They'll be like, huh? Mm, right. Food? Even the guy will say, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, food. Mm -hmm. Why do you say yes with your head? Right. Because it shows that even if I ask you, do you want to eat? Mm -hmm. You're already saying yes without saying yes. Right. You're using another language called what? Body, Body language. language. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm trying to you teach you what? something to open you, you up to something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Keep going, Papa. So if God is a spirit, we also communicate with God what? In spirit. Yes. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers. These are spiritual things that we are fighting. Mm -hmm. The reality is I don't need to use human words to cast out a demon. Amen. I use those words so that you know what I'm doing. Right, 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 mm. right, right. Now you didn't hear what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I catch that. I, I did catch that. Are you, are you getting mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I don't need to say in the name of Jesus for God to answer me. Right. That's why Jesus never said in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did Moses say uh, in the name of Jehovah? He just said God. Right. My father. You say my Lord. Uh, I'm doing this. Answer thou me. In the name of God. They never said that. They understood the language of the spirit. It's good. So we use words. It's just like if you read uh, First Corinthians. I think First Corinthians 14 speaks of our tongues, right? What did Paul say? He said, I will pray with my understanding so that I'm not a barbarian to you. Not because I have to. I just want to make sure that you're in one accord with what I'm saying. So if I come with just a roba shandi ribi handa katosha rebe debe 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 debe, we'll feel the presence. We'll feel the power. And then if I say amen, I leave. You have nothing. Unless you can interpret, you have nothing. Chai. Oh, I feel it in my. Uh, in my, in my bones and in my, uh, in every part of my body, in my heart, in every ligament. <laughs> yeah. It's too much. So what makes you powerful and what empowers your word is to understand the culture of your nation so that you can speak that language. Amen. So there is a culture of the kingdom of God. I'll say that one more time. There is a culture of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has a culture. And anybody that does not know that culture will fall short of acquiring the power that comes with the kingdom. If you became an American citizen and you denounced America, America can revoke its citizenship. Remember, we have become the citizens of heaven. We are not of heaven. Amen. We have become citizens of heaven. So we are learning the constitution and the mannerism and the behavior of heaven so that we can reap the benefits of heaven. Amen. Amen. Is this making sense, Emmanuel? Yeah. To say? So if I start now uh, 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 speaking up against America, if I start insulting the American Constitution, if I start inciting people against America, America will say, no, no, you're not, you don't really, you're, even though you swore allegiance to America, you are a traitor to our nation. Right. They will revoke their citizenship. Quickly. As fast as possible, they will take it from you. Quickly, yeah. It doesn't matter what country you, you go to. That's why when people commit treason against the nation, they are thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. There are Americans that are actually not in America right now. They escaped to other European countries because they committed treason. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Either they, they released uh, documents that are not supposed to be classified things that are secrets of the nations, whether good, bad, or ugly. The point is you embarrass the nation, we're going to throw you in. Right. So you are a citizen of heaven, hmm. but you don't live according to heavenians. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 Your culture shows that you're disconnected from the culture of the country mm -hmm. you belong to. Mm -hmm. So if somebody meets you, they will mistake you for, <laughs> let's say, Russian, wow. Kenyan, South African, Congolese, yet you're from heaven. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. That's good. Because all citizens of heaven have the same mannerism, right. have the same constitution, they right. all behave the same. Right. Amen. That is why Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know, know whether them. they are from our country or not. Or not. Hmm. Ooh, wow, that's deep. That's good. So if somebody comes to you pretending to be a man of God, you can tell that they are not a man of God. If you observe them closely, you will notice that there are things that they do that people from our nation don't do. Mm, come on. 
You will observe them and you will see they don't speak like people from our nation speak. If you observe them, you will know that in our constitution, we have direct access to our God. So we all go to him and we hear from him. Yes. But this person is never in the presence of our God. This guy cannot be from our country. Mm, come on. If you ask him what is God saying, it will be a bunch of nothings. Nothing ever happens. So we know he hasn't been with the king. Mm. That's good. Do you understand the lingo of heaven? What is that language that God used to create the universe? Yeah. That language was in Jesus, was in Moses, was in all the apostles, the prophets. Is in me. Amen. Is in the angels. Yes. Amen. Why don't you have it? Ooh, that's good. Why don't you have it? It means there's something missing. <laughs> it means there's something missing. Something yeah. needs to be done. I don't know if somebody's listening to me. It means there's something missing. You see, the issue is some of you have lived outside of your nation called heaven for such a long time that when you see somebody manifesting heaven, your first idea is to think of juju. Mm. Because you have spent too much time in the kingdom of darkness mm, that you it. only understand power to be from juju, not from heaven. Say it, Yet all authority and power comes from above. Yeah, yeah. Come on. So when you see somebody casting out devils, you say he's casting out Beelzebub by the power of what? Beelzebub. Beelzebub. If you see somebody healing the sick, the first idea in your thought is that it is fake. If you see somebody prophesying deep details, you say there is no way anybody can do that. Either they are using a familiar spirit or they got information. As if angels don't talk to people. Right. It's because you have lived outside of heaven too long. Mm. I feel like That's I'm talking truth. to myself. Yeah. That's the truth. Mm. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Hey. If your faith is in juju more, it means that you give more time to juju. Oh, say it. <laughs> the Bible says, where, where your heart is, there your treasures will be also. Amen. So if your first thought of seeing God's power is not, wow, God can do anything, it's yeah. juju. It means your treasures are also in what? Juju. juju. It means that you believe that those mm. things you want can only be produced by what? Juju. Wow. Wow. <sighs> wow. <laughs> so you can't say I know who I am if you don't know the culture of your nation. Let me ask you a question, Emmanuel. Okay. If we went to Nigeria right now, mm -hmm. you entered your father's house. Right. What food will you find? Yeah, same food I was eating when I was a kid. Okay, mm -hmm. what is that food? Like pounded yam or something. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. When you find pounded yam, you know you're home. Right. Right? Yes. You know you're home. Mm -hmm. You see Suya, you know you're home. <laughs> You are like, ah. <laughs> you know your home. Right, that's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you eat, if you eat uh, um, pounded yam in America, you compare it with home, right? Absolutely. You'd be like, ah, it's, it's, it, you know, it kind of reminds yeah. me of home. You know, it's right. kind of, it's kind of like home. Mm -hmm. So the evidence of being at home is even in the culture of food that they're eating. Mm. Mm. If you went home and you found Italian food, you'd be like, ah. What's going on here? Oh, what's going on here? What happened? Right. Where's the pounded yam? No, we are eating, you know, nowadays we just eat 
we eat spaghetti and you know meatballs and you know fettuccine and <laughs> you look and you say ah come on please re you know remove right. this nonsense right what is right. going on here mm -hmm. where's the pounded yam right <laughs> that's what i want <laughs> when we were growing up with pounded yam we hated it because it was the norm right. you travel abroad you're like hey i miss it mm -hmm. if i can just get a little bit like this mm -hmm. i will know i'm home just right. that feeling of being at home yes yeah, sure wow. it is because even in the food hmm. wow that's good. Wow. Even in the food. My, 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 my little cousin is in town. She's not little, but I call her little because she's little to me. Mm -hmm. But um, her name is Blessed. Uh, her name is Benny. You've seen her in church. A skinny, long, long human being. <laughs> <laughs> but she's been home and she cooked like some food from home. Ah. I, it took me so back, you know, just smelling fufu in the house, you know, I, I, you know, cassava leaves, and mm -hmm. it's just like, ah, I felt it, you know, even though I don't eat much, I, I you know, I just, I just felt it in my spirit. I was like, woof, home is home. So what made me feel connected to home is because somebody spoke a language of home using food. Is mm. expressing home with food, yet the ingredients are everywhere in the world mostly. But not everybody is communicating the same language through food. That's so good. That's so good. When I went to Kenya... When I went to Kenya, uh, when, when Christian went home to be with the Lord, I went to Kenya for about uh, seven days. And when I was in Kenya, right? When I was in Kenya and uh, Lee traveled with me, we only ate nyama choma and ugali every day. So it's like, uh, like barbecue, but uh, the barbecue there, we don't use barbecue sauce or anything. It's, it's done differently. All you need is salt okay. and some salad that they make with peppers and whatever and some fufu. Uh -huh. That's it. Okay. Ha! You will swear and speak in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's all I ate every day. <laughs> Seriously. That's all me and him ate. Right. Nobody ate pizza. Nobody ate any of that. That's all we ate religiously. Mm -hmm. Religiously. Hmm. Every day. I even stopped on the street. I even stopped. I even asked them for something. My Kenyan people know this. I asked for this street barbecue. It's called Mutura. Okay. It's like, uh, it, I wouldn't even describe it because some of you will be like, eh, but it's the most delicious <laughs> thing you ever eat. Everything I asked for were things that I grew up with, like in right, the, you know? Right, right. Why? Because I wanted that connection that spoke when I communicated with the food, when mm -hmm. it touched my tongue, I remembered where I came from. Right, mm -hmm. right. Hmm. Wow. So the food is ministering to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is why Jesus also used another language. He said, this is my body, this is my blood. Do this in my remembrance. Every time you hold the bread and you hold the, the, the wine and you eat, mm -hmm. You are entering into not only the covenant, but in the rim, because the covenant is done. Right. Yeah. Jesus did that. Mm -hmm. You are going back to what Jesus' love for you is, the culture mm -hmm. of heaven, which is sacrifice, giving yourself up for another. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is wow. why I said, do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. ah. Because the power of it has already been released. Mm -hmm. But when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. When you tap into this, Amen. Remember how much I love you. Right. Remember right. the culture of your father. Yes. Remember that for God so loved the world that he gave. So right. we express God's love in the house of God. We remember of what Jesus did for us, not only by reading scripture, but every time you see communion, yeah. mm -hmm. you see the suffering that Jesus went through because of you. Right. It's a language now. Wow. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Wow. Hmm. 
I don't know if this is wow. making sense. Is this Absolutely. making sense, Esther yes. Rosie? Yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to unlock you to understand something. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Oh, Monica Njoroge explained it very well. She said, uh, Mutura is uh, Kenyan sausages. I agree with you. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> nice. nice. So tomorrow, when I come on, I'll push it deeper. Amen. Amen. I will push it much deeper so that you get even into it even more to really, really comprehend. For you to really tap into unlocking the power in your words. Amen. Amen. Because language is more than words. Language is a culture. Like an example, let me, let me, give, let me give an example. If you go to Nigeria, everybody speaks English, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you w if we want to know you're Nigerian, you have to speak Pigeon. Yeah. If you don't have Pigeon, you, you're not Nigerian. No. You're a suspect. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you grow abroad? They will even say, are you, you grew abroad. You're not really yeah, Nigerian. Yeah, that's you know, true. They'll actually make fun of you if you hang out with the people from home. Yes. Give us some few Pigeon words. Yeah, for what did happen, man? That's English. Did you understand anything? <laughs> <laughs> You didn't understand nothing <laughs> because he's speaking another English that only the street people know right. or the local people know. Mm -hmm. But it's still English. Mm -hmm. But if you come with your regular English, your English already tells them that you're a foreigner. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. 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 I don't know if yes, somebody yes, is yes, catching yes, what I'm yes, saying. Yes. They already know you're a foreigner. Uh -huh. Even if you are to buy something, they can hike up the price because they know you don't know the culture. Mm -hmm. They can take advantage of you. Right, right. So demons and devils hmm. take advantage of you because they wow. know that you speak like wow. a foreigner. Whew. They know you don't really know your culture. Oh, oh no. That's, That's clear. crazy. Jesus. That's Jesus. crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm just going to say it this way. After listening to this, if you remain the same, you need deliverance. Come on. Hmm. I'm going to finish with this. Um, how many people want to get some points on what they can start working on? Amen. Yes. Amen. You want me to at least I give do. you one? Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, let, me, let me see if people are ready. Let me see how many people want to receive how to unlock this. Now, listen to me clearly. Listen to me clearly. The first step to empowering your words, the first culture of heaven, which Satan broke and he was kicked out of heaven, that his words no longer have power, is purity. Purity is the recipe, is the foundation and is the ground of God's power. In order for you to produce negative power, you have to live in sin. And for you to produce positive power, you need to live in righteousness and in purity. Tomorrow when I come back, I will go deeper into this and we'll go deep and deep and deep. And I promise you, I'll give you step, steps, steps that your life will never be the same. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, everybody that is watching, let them be changed and transformed today. I decree and declare, Father, that these words that they have heard, that their spirit and life, may they be changed and be brought into the greater knowledge of Christ. Amen. And may today, from today, what they say may come to pass. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let it be so. Amen. 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 It is done in Jesus' name.